contest. Actually, one of the uh, women that we spoke with, she called it the mother of all cranes. She said it was huge, and you can see uh, just about how big it is. It actually stretches for about a, a block or two, uh, almost like a block and a half here. And I can imagine, uh, where do you run? That is a good question. Yeah. Where do you take off when you see something so huge and so big coming, uh, uh, crashing down here? On the 5th of February 2016, an ordinary morning in downtown Manhattan spiralled into complete chaos when an enormous crane toppled over and was sent plummeting to the ground, resulting in deadly consequences. Terrified onlookers watched on helplessly as the crane destroyed cars and buildings. The incident sent shockwaves around New York, with many at first thinking it was just a freak accident. The sadness quickly turned into anger once the investigation found that the shocking incident could have been completely avoided. So, how did the crane fall? This is the infamous New York crane collapse of 2016. New York is perhaps the most famous city in the world. Even with myself being from England, countless friends of mine have visited New York and I know at some point that I would like to go as well. Often referred to as the Big Apple or the city that never sleeps, New York is famous for its intimidating skyscrapers that tower over the city, famous landmarks including the Statue of Liberty and Central Park, and its many districts and boroughs, one of these being Manhattan. As many of you probably were if you don't live in the States, I was introduced to Manhattan through the countless amount of films that have been set there, including one of my favourite films from the 1970s, Taxi Driver starring Robert De Niro. Over the past 50 years, Manhattan has experienced massive transformations, with the last 20 in particular being huge for the area's growth. According to the New York City Economic Development Corporation, since 2000, the population of Manhattan has more than doubled and the area is visited by millions of tourists each year. This means the borough is constantly developing new infrastructure, transportation and housing, whilst keeping previous buildings up to date. On the 5th of February 2016, work was being done on the former Western Union building at 60 Hudson Street. A crane was brought in to replace the air conditioning units on the roof. The crane was owned by Bay Crane. The 5th of February 2016 was a cold and snowy morning and winds were blowing fiercely. Because of this, the crane operator thought it would be best to lay the crane down to avoid it blowing over. Seemingly out of nowhere, the crane slowly started to topple over towards the ground. The incident was captured on camera. The crane crashed down onto the street, crushing cars and destroying buildings. The scene was pure chaos. People were running out of buildings and up the street. Construction worker Charlie Jones said the sound of the fall was so loud that he immediately believed it might have been a terrorist attack. He said, I thought it was a bomb. It sounded like it was 9-11 again. I was here for that, and it sounded the same, and here we are, very close to the World Trade Center. Another witness who was walking nearby said, I was walking out on my break, and I saw it tipping over. It was falling down the street, scraping the buildings, bricks and bits of windows were raining down. I ran. I'm not afraid to tell you, it was terrifying. Within minutes, 40 fire trucks, 140 firefighters, and hundreds of police officers and emergency service workers were on the scene. The police helped people evacuate the area, whilst emergency service personnel dealt with the injured. One police officer said, When it came down, it felt like an earthquake. Our building rattled, shook. At first it was unclear if there were any casualties. Firefighters and the police worked tirelessly, combing the area to make sure everyone was okay. Tragically, this is when they came across the body of 38-year-old David Witchers, who was killed instantly when the crane landed on top of him. Jason O'Connor, who found David, said, I checked to see if there were any signs of life. There were none. Miraculously, David was the only fatality. Three more were found injured and were rushed to Bellevue Hospital, where thankfully, they recovered. Mayor Bill de Blasio said, The fact is, this is a very, very sad incident. We have lost a life, but if you go out there on the street, as I did, and see what happened here, thank God it was not worse. The site was closed off and an investigation was launched, and the question on everyone's mind was, 
How did the crane fall over? The investigation into the incident was headed by the US Department of Labor, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, and the Directorate of Construction. The findings showed that this was anything but a freak accident. The investigation found that the operator of the crane, Kevin Riley, was responsible for the disaster after failing to secure the crane the night before the crash and lowering the crane wrong. To understand better, the crane had a boom and jib. The boom is the arm attached to the crane cab, used to lift heavy objects, whereas the jib is the horizontal second arm, allowing the crane to have extra reach and more support. The correct procedure in putting a crane down is to first lower the jib at an angle to the ground and then start to lower the boom. Mr. Riley lowered the boom of the crane at an improper angle which, with the strong winds, resulted in the crane becoming overloaded and toppling over. The engineering analyst stated, Cranes generally collapse due to the structural failures of the boom and the jib, tipping due to lack of stability, failure of outrigger supports, wire rope fractures and mechanical and hydraulic issues. In this case, the crane tipped over or overturned as it failed to remain stable under a decreasing boom angle and increasing wind. The city's building commission said, The crane operator involved in this incident acted recklessly, with tragic consequences. The actions we're taking should send the message to everyone in the construction industry that safety must come first. Mr. Riley had his crane license permanently revoked and he was fined $52,000. Despite this, Kevin maintained his innocence and claims that the investigation was unfair. He countersued investigators in 2017, but I was unable to find out if he won. I can't imagine he did, as his license was never reinstated. After the incident, new crane regulations were implemented. These regulations included mandating a lift director to be present during operation of large cranes, mandating an assembly and disassembly director when erecting, or putting away cranes and a ban that must lower their booms to the ground in winds of 20 miles per hour or less. The man who lost his life, David, was remembered as being an angel. He was described by friends and families as being a mathematical genius, which is evident as he graduated from Harvard. He always had a smile on his face and is remembered for his good deeds. David's widow said, I want you to know that I will do my best to live for both of us and she described her pain as unbearable. David's remains were taken for burial at Junction Cemetery in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. David's widow also ended up suing the city of New York for $600 million, but the results were never published. Thank you for watching.